Welcome back to the channel guys. Today I'm going to talk to you about shoulder plane, shoulder pitch, how you use your shoulders. A big area and hopefully I can scratch the surface on it today. Often the case with impact, people are trying to simulate the image of impact. Impact of the great players and I think what people are, are, are visualizing is a left shoulder high, a hip action forwards, this lovely straight line between the left arm and the club shaft, something that looks a little bit like that. Now, the problem with that is a still image doesn't display activity. It's a still, nothing's moving because it's an image. Unfortunately, when we're moving the golf club, we have so many oppositions. One thing is, to, or one component is moving to the right, one component is moving to the left. One component's moving up, one component's moving down. What I mean by that, my handle is trying to move in some people's eyes, not in my eyes, but in some people's eyes, my handle's trying to move forwards. Well, if my handle's moving forwards, look how the club is moving backwards. If my handle's moving upwards, look how the club head's moving downwards. I push down, the head moves up. I push back, my right hip moves forwards. My left shoulder goes up, my right shoulder goes down. Therefore, what's driving what? And trying to doctor an image is a really... Uh, uh, it's, it's not the way that you should be looking at. Um, so today I want you to think about how these shoulders are going to work in our golf swing and the implications their movement or lack of movement have on fundamentally our extremities, which are arms, which obviously has an impact on the club, but most notably on the handle and the feet. If you've watched a few of my videos, you'll appreciate that. I'm always talking about the handle because if we can all learn to navigate the handle more, the head will be way more influenced in its direction. I, I bought this um, analogy to the forefront in one of my early videos on the channel which you might not have seen but this golf club is a trailer on a car. This golf club is your arms and the, or should I say the car. The trailer, the car. The golf club, your arms. The ball joint on the car and the trailer are your wrist angles. Now, when you're reversing a car, you turn your steering wheel to the left, the back of your car moves to the left, but the trailer moves to the right. And that's the way we've got to start to appreciate how the handle is influencing the head. Think about the amount of people that battle when they first get in a car and reverse a trailer, they turn the steering wheel to the right, expect the trailer to go to the right, but actually the trailer goes to the left. That is a really important way of thinking about how this handle and golf club and shoulder operate in a swing. When we set up to the golf ball, the level of our shoulders will be, di will be dictated by the pressures we feel through our feet. If I put force and, f and energy into my left foot, you can see how my left shoulder goes down. I put force into my right foot, we can see how my right foot, uh, my left shoulder goes up and the pressure in my right foot goes, uh, the, the left shoulder goes up and the pressure in the right foot increases. Sorry, it's still early. <laughs> Therefore, how your foot pressure is at address will affect the level of your shoulders from a face-on perspective. 
When I then come to think about the angle of my spine, depending on whether my left hip is forwards of my shoulder or my left hip is back of my shoulder, will dictate whether, again, my shoulders are tipped either towards the target or away from the target. Now, the reason why I reference that is because, for the most part, we're looking for our spine to pitch around itself in a backswing. For me, personally, my preference, I don't like to see the back going into extension. Nor do I like it going into flexion. I like it to keep its shape. That's how we were built. Hold the shape of the spine, move around that spine, and we will start to create form and structure. And we will start to use ourselves in a better, better manner. Therefore, and that's a big, top, big topic, flat back, uh, arch back, TPI like flat back, pull check, uh, and uh, if you've not checked out pull check, he's a, uh, someone that I really use and reference for all of my learning when it comes to an anatomy. Creating an S spine is, is really important, but that's a, that's a whole big topic right there. But anyhow, that's my preference. Understanding, therefore, where I set my spine at the start is certainly going to influence where my pelvis moves. So the more I lay my spine back, if we draw a vertical line up, and hopefully I can do this on, on my editing, I draw a vertical line up through my feet, the outermost point of my pelvis, I'd like to see it match up with the outermost point of my right shoulder relative to that balance line at address. In the same way, from a down the line perspective, the top and the base of the spine are fairly equal between the balance points from that plane. And if I was to then take a camera shot from above, I'd now be balanced between the, the top of my spine and the base of my spine and through my feet. So in th all three dimensions, we are balanced. As soon as you create balance in your body, the musculature isn't holding tight to hold you up. As soon as we are off balance, musculature pulls tight because it's gonna feel itself fall over. At that point, we're in trouble. So balance is really important. Therefore, standing heavily on the toes of your feet or a dress is a real no-no in my eyes. So getting back to shoulder pitch, I like to see the left shoulder a little bit higher to start with, purely because left hand is higher on the golf club than right hand. Left, hold, left shoulder is higher. <clears throat> then as I'm making a backswing, the shoulder pitch, in terms of left shoulder up or left shoulder down, a lot of that will be dictate, dictated by how the pelvis moves in the backswing. If your right hip moves to the side, what will happen is that it will cause more side bend in your spine than you would like, and then you will rotate around and you'll see a bit too much of an inverted shoulder pitch. If I now make my pelvis flatten out, my left hip go higher, my right hip tuck under, now all of a sudden, my left shoulder feels like it goes up. But again, my left hip going higher has created side bend in the opposite direction. I rotate around that angle and the shoulder pitch has changed. Therefore, changing shoulder pitch in terms of this movement, which is a side bend of the thoracic spine, the top half of your spine, is really, I mean, it, it's obviously very doable, but it's, it, it, it's so, uh, it would be so difficult to, to make that the lion's share of the cause of poor shoulder pitches. Shoulder pitches are really altered and, uh, and, and out of shape because of the way we use our pelvis. The way we use our pelvis comes ultimately, for my money anyway, through the feet. So if you use your feet well, the pelvis will orientate well, which will move up through the chain, make your shoulders pitch well, and affect how you use your arms. So let's give you a drill. And I, I'm going to go back to my, my TheraBand here. And one of the things that 
I, I see a lot of is when I reference this impact condition, how guys and girls like, like to see the left shoulder high, hip forwards, and a very, <laughs> it, it, they believe it looks uh, an exciting impact condition, but it, it's not one that is very effective. And I want to give a shout out to Brian Martin, a chap that I caught up with for the first time in a little while, um, who actually made me think about this video today because I, I think it's an important one. And, and there's a few other guys and girls that have messaged me to, to talk about shoulders. We're going to put this TheraBand around my waist here and I've got a couple of little loops in it. And what I'm going to do is I'm now going to pull that TheraBand off of my pelvis. So if you hitch it up a little bit and then push the TheraBand down to the floor. Now when you push the TheraBand down to the floor, it's going to pull this left shoulder down onto my rib cage. And then what I want you to do is set yourself up, left hip slightly forwards uh, to meet the, the shoulder and the hip is almost lined up with the left ankle. And then what I want you to do is make some swings with your right hand and as you swing through, you'll start to see the stretch of the TheraBand and now you'll start to see my left shoulder more down. My left shoulder more down really starts to free up the left hip and freeing up the left hip now starts to allow my chest to move around and allow the handle to move back in. So I'm going to set myself up. This is my first shot of the day. It's 7.42. I'm feeling a little bit sleepy so give me a break here if I do shank this one. So I've got my TheraVan pushed down. Come on Mr. Trapman. So there we go, a little bit light on the attack angle. The path was a little inside though, which is good. So I'm just going to feel a little bit softer in transition as I pull the golf club. I'm keeping the stretch of the TheraBand down to the floor. That was equally a hideous strike. But this is a really great drill of making you appreciate how the left shoulder should work through the golf ball. And the more I push that left shoulder down, the more it's going to, oh, boomerang golf ball. The more it's going to allow my right side to move around me, rather than releasing the band pressure, which now, releasing the band pressure, now elevates the handle. And in elevating the handle, we can see how the club head would move in because the handle elevation is up because I'm picturing that impact condition. Now look where the face is trying to point. It's trying to point at the TV screen. This left shoulder is a big player through strike, which if you haven't seen my video on the um, essential golf guide, grip, golf grip guide, the pad of the left hand and the pressure down on the handle will either be facilitated or not facilitated by that shoulder and its mobility. If you're a guy or girl that starts to work the handle up and the shoulder up, you're going to really appease the pressure on the handle all to the face and the path and whip her out to the right. So the TheraBand drill is a useful one to give you a sensation of what that left shoulder feels like. If the ball then starts going off to the right or to the left excessively, you, my friend, has got a, have got a, a face angle issue, not a path or a movement issue. Hopefully that's been useful. If you've enjoyed the video, do hit the like button and share and subscribe with your friends while you are here. And I wish you a great golfing day and I look forward to, as usual, seeing you on the next one.